the last time this young man was with us, uh, the audience was so captivated by his performance. And when he sat down with his little friend, I, I, I found myself talking and directing questions and things to the, to the little <laughs> friend, which is kind of spooky. And then I saw the boom man. Harry, I'm sorry, i got to say this. <laughs> Moving the mic back and forth like this to Willie and to Lester. <laughs> That's how good this guy is. Willie Tyler and Lester, welcome him, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, I'd like to introduce my partner, Les. Les. Hey, baby, what's happening? <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask you something. You are astrology nut, right? Yeah, buff. You're astrology buff. <laughs> yeah, play on words, huh? No, really, I want to ask you. you. You want to find out my daily horoscope thing. My sign is Virgo. Tell me something about me. Well, pretty soon, you're going to hear the titty tatter little feet around the house. You mean a baby is coming? No, mm -hmm. man. Pretty soon, the mice are going to start wearing shoes. <laughs> A little clean joke for you, folks. Start off with it. Hey, what nationality are you? Say what? I say, what nationality are you? A black dummy, man. Don't you believe in seeing it, baby? Get yourself together. Hey, I like, your, I like your watch. Like my watch, baby? That's right. Does it tell time? Huh? I said, does your watch tell time? No, man. You got to look at it. <laughs> Now you're a shake off or you going back to the farm. <laughs> I want to ask you something else. I understand you left home at an early age, right? Yeah. Why did you leave home? Something my father said. Well, what did he say? Get out. <laughs> Man, I was so poor, I had to move out of the slums. You had to move out of the slums? Yeah. Where did you go? The ghetto? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, don't laugh, man. This stuff's not funny to you. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, don't do that, man. If you're nervous, just cry. Okay, what do you mind? Yeah, so I got something else. You came from a rough neighborhood, right? Yeah, man. Every time I walked down the street, everybody ran. Everybody ran? Yeah, but they never caught me. I was walking down the street one night. Well, better late than never. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, go ahead. You forgot what you gonna say? No, you were saying something. No, you, you had the line. Oh, uh, I was walking down the street the other night, man. This guy ran up behind me and he grabbed me. Well, what did you do? In no time at all, I had my nose punching away at his fist. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like you to know what is called the extemporaneous part of this act. Uh, we'd like it, first of all, by... <coughs> Way of Time Machine we'd like to take, we'd like to bring to you, by the way, tonight, the prehistoric caveman. Good evening, sir. How are you getting along? Hey, baby, what's happening? <laughs> hey, would you mind telling me something about, you know, what, what do you do? I mean, like, you know, standing around in the cave all day, what do you do? Oh, uh, man, I watched Milford yesterday, man. He fell into a volcano. Milford fell, fell into a volcano? Yeah, he was really burning up over that. <laughs> well, I understand you're going to get a hair transplant, right? Yeah, I'm going to get a hair transplant next week, man. You're getting a hair transplant next week? Yeah. But you've got a, enough hair on your head. Huh? You've got, a, you've got enough hair on your head. Yeah, man, but I'm going to get some taken on my head and put it on my chest. <laughs> Everybody calling me sissy, you know. Okay, well, can, one more question before I get rid of you, okay? Yeah, go ahead. Don't say it that way, man. No, wait. Uh, one more question and I'll get rid of you, right? Yeah, fine. Now, what are you going to do tonight since television hasn't been invented yet? Well, I shot a wild pig this afternoon, so I guess I'll just sit around in the cage tonight and chew the fat. <laughs> Solid majority is getting louder. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now one more quote, we, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, right now we'd like to take you back to the Knights of King Arthur. Now I will play the part of one of King Arthur's knights. My partner Lester will portray the role of the innkeeper. The knight knocks at the innkeeper's door. Innkeeper! Innkeeper! Hey, you gotta really play close attention to this, folks, or it'll tash you right back. Go ahead. <laughs> now, dig. Watch this, now, dig. <laughs> <laughs> and keeper, and keeper, where you look, man? My horse, my steed is collapsed. I must have some type of an animal to ride on to get the King Arthur's Palace on. Do you have any type of an animal here that I can ride on to get the King Arthur's Palace? I can't help the baby. <laughs> but I must have some... Look, I can't help you, man. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Wake me up this time. I can't help you. But I must have... Look, the only thing I got is that big old dog over there in the corner. Very good. I'll take the dog. I couldn't do that. 
And why not? I couldn't let a knight go out on a dog like that. Okay, a little hungry next day. <laughs> okay, they got one, qu one other question for you, and then we're going to get into the song. Yeah. Do you think, the, do you think, bless you. <laughs> he coughed. Well, bless you is just the same thing. Man. Okay, well, can I, yeah. do you think that most people like see-through blouses? What? You better rephrase that thing, man. Do you think most people dislike see-through blouses? Only if they got bad eyesight. <laughs> we gonna sing a song. Nice, silly, you please lay it on. Here we go now. Sunny. Yesterday my life was filled with rain. Yeah. Sunny. Smiled at me and really eased the pain. Dark days are done. Bright days are here. My sunny one shines so sincere. Sunny one so true, yeah. I love you. Thank you for the sunshine and rain, yeah. Sunny, thank you for the love that brought the way You gave to me all that long Now I feel about ten feet tall Sunny one, so do yeah I love you Oh, that's really? a sharp outfit. Yeah. Oh, that's that. So beautiful. What's, what's this? Is that for security? Yes, that's my pacifier, you know. Your pacifier? Yeah, pacifier. <laughs> you use it often? No, I don't get mad too often, you know. Oh, oh you only use that when you get angry? Yes, when I get mad. Okay, I see. You know, instead of breaking the walls, you know, that's how to, you know, pacify myself. Yeah, yeah, I bet you look very innocent when you use this, too. Yes, and Mike, I got a question for you. All right, fine. How does it feel talking to a dummy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How does it feel? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike. Okay. Uh, you get, you know something? You're a fine, fine looking young fella. Thank you. You look pretty young too, fellow. <laughs> what did I just say? No, what did you just say for me? Just like you don't worry about it. Hi, folks. Hi. <laughs> How does it feel being on the same show with two big stars like Ozzy and Harry? Oh, I love this. When I found they're going to be on the show, I mean, we were going to be on the show. Let me rephrase that. We were going to be on the show with them. Yeah, that way you'd like to because you are ready. You want to talk, man? Yeah, well, you, well go ahead, say something. <laughs> well, don't sit there like a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, I, is it true that you were on radio first before the, the, the television series? Right, yeah, that's right. right. Did you grow up with the show, too? Yes, definitely. You're right. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I was, I How about was, you, Lester? I was still in the woods then. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah. who does your hair, Lester? Uh, well, uh, Monty Rock does it every now and then. Yeah, he's yeah. on the show later. Yes, uh, yes he does. Uh, did he fun. work on it today before he came on? Well, he didn't really have time. Now. He just said, go for yourself, baby. Mm -hmm. that's, the way, that's the way he talks, you know, go for yourself, baby. <laughs> did you tease it? Did I tease it? Yeah. No, I'm very serious with my hair. Oh, I see. <laughs> Can the people hear out there? I mean, you know, I think maybe, maybe I'm listening. Did you hear what he said? I, heard I said, did you tease it? And he said, no, I'm very serious with my hair. <laughs> oh, that, that's worth repeating. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Willie, <laughs> Willie, what do you remember most about Mr. and Mrs. Nelson? Actually, I remember, I remember, let's see, it's Ricky, I think. And he would, he would say, I don't remember the saying. I don't mess around, boy. Yes. You're right. <laughs> this is the saying he used to say all the time. And it, it really stuck with me. And every time I'd listen to the show and, and uh, see the show on television, I'd always wait for those parts. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I saw the show too. That's nice. Yeah. Nice show. I yeah. Know. Did you get that outfit from Monty Rock? No, did Monty it? didn't get this. I got this hot. No, <laughs> <laughs> show this expression, you know. Yeah. Do you have a special diet for Lester? Uh, yes. Uh, what do you call that stuff? Uh, what do you call it? Well, you, you know. Oh, sap. Sap? Sap. <laughs> Isn't it hard to d digest? <laughs> <laughs> With me, it don't matter. <laughs> We'll be back with everyone following us. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, 
Our next guest is a very interesting young man, and the last time he was with us, I was away for a couple of days. But I know about him. He's made an international name for himself as an actor, and more recently through his uh, play, Fortune in Men's Eyes, as a director. And Ozzy and Harriet, I know that uh, you're both familiar with this young man's work. Yes, we know him. So let's all get together and greet Sal Minio. <laughs> There are, only, there are special people who get this kind of reaction when you say their name. <gasps> you get that. I look like Lester's brother, that's what I'm <laughs> How is the play doing in New York? Fantastic, thank you. It's really doing very well. Uh, last time I was on your show, we talked about it very briefly, in fact. And the surprising thing was that immediately after the show was aired, a lot of uh, women came to see the play and they said they had heard me talking about it on your show and uh, which is strange because of the the subject matter we were very surprised that this kind of thing would not so much attract that kind of an audience but that women would have uh, you know the guts to go out and see this kind of a, of a play excuse me for the benefit of those who may not know what the play is about refresh us will you basically it deals with what happens to a 17-year-old boy who's sentenced to prison and the mental and physical brutality that he's subjected to. Um, it does go on today and all of this uh, that you see on stage is an accumulation of factual things that have happened in prison. And it's pretty shocking, frankly. And, and I was very a pleased lot of publicity that, about it, yeah, about well, what's going on in prisons. As a result of the play, and I think um, uh, uh, this is one of the areas that I, I feel very proud of, is that aside from it being an entertaining show and it being theater, it's caused a lot of people to all of a sudden stand up and say, now wait a minute, is this actually happening in today's prisons? I mean, our, our kids, you know, kids who are sentenced to very minor uh, for minor crimes are exposed to this kind of thing, you know, being uh, sent to prison with men that are hardened criminals. Yeah, and then the play is making the impact that you thought it would. It's causing that kind of reaction, mm -hmm. which is uh, is kind of exciting because you can't turn away from it. And when, it, when an actor, and a good actor, because you're a very good actor, in fact, Thank all, all I can think of when I look at this young fellow is the picture you did with Jimmy Dean, Re was it Rebel? Oh, Rebel, Rebel. Cause, yeah. 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 You and he yeah. were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Mike, I, I, don't, I don't want to break into a serious discussion, but uh, Sal was up to Dave's house when there was a birthday party or something, and he told, uh, speaking about prisons, and Sal told a story that I never forgot, and I just remind him, I would tell what wanted to tell, he's tell a story, so. so well, I, it, strangely enough, I, uh, when I was ready to do the play, uh, to direct the play, I went to various prisons to, you know, get research. And of course, it was very depressing in the oh, beginning. Oh, yes. Um, I went to San Quentin, and I sat in the cell with a man who had been in prison for 35 years. Strangely enough, as depressing as it was, he told the story to me. Uh, <coughs> 35, and he, 35 years. years and you know when he told me that of course my mouth dropped and he said yeah it's a long time isn't it the cell is about this big and uh, they spend 23 hours a day in the cell and one hour a day they're allowed to walk in front of the cell now mind you with this kind of thing going on in his head there was a sense of humor that he had and he told me the story about this prisoner who was in jail and his mother came to see him and the mother came and she said, my boy, I don't understand you. You, I, you go out and you buy a gun and you shoot people and then you go rob. But what kind of a boy I bring you up to be? I give you a nice home. He says, hey, Ma, look, first of all, we're not Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> It's a heavy prison <laughs> sample. <laughs> you know, Ozzie and Harriet and I were talking about the generation gap. Do you, do you think it's beginning to break down? Uh, frankly, no. I think it's getting bigger. <clears throat> Somebody referred to it the other day. I can't remember who, as a gulch. Who was it? Reading up. 
Grady Nutt called it a gulch. gulch. <laughs> <One> generation <laughs> gulch. Well, I, I think I'm very fortunate in a sense. I'm 30 years old. I'm sort you of right in between. Oh, you go to camp this year, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you're, on the, you're on the cusp. You're on the ragged edge. Yeah, you're going to fall off. I don't know who's going to send me to one. But <laughs> uh, no, it's kind of a groovy age because I went through the 50s, you know, that era, which was a whole era in itself, and it's, it's changed completely. So, in a sense, I can still communicate with... Uh, the young generation, the below 30s, and still can sit and have a conversation with yeah. you and your old. That's kind of an enviable position, isn't it? Being in that position, I find that, that uh, no, the, the gap is much bigger. I think what's happening now is that the younger people have decided, uh, rather than trying to penetrate and trying to make older people understand, they're saying, forget it, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, let's yes them a bit and say, yeah, right, you're hip to us and you like our dancing and you like our music, but you really don't understand a thing. And so it's gotten to be a much wider gap and yet there's less overt gap. Do, do you know what I yes, mean? In other words, it's, it's a lot subtler now. We travel with different crowds because I don't feel that. Really? No. no. I don't understand some of the fashions I'm trying to, you know. But I, now, I, uh, days, I can't walk in and buy clothes like I used to. I don't want to be ridiculously silly to be so up with it. And I don't want to be like day before yesterday either. But I find with the basics, I really don't have any problem with younger people. I mean, I'm talking like uh, 18, 19, and 20. Because I understand what it is. It's, a, it's an honesty. It's a basic honesty that they're trying for. And uh, to use one of their expressions, I really dig it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, don't, don't you think, too, that uh, it's very easy from the standpoint of people who are quite young to look at the generation that has preceded them. Not only this present thing, but when I was a kid, and uh, later on as you move on and your own children look at you, I think it's always easy to see the faults of the generation that's getting a little bit older. And I think that that's what makes... No, no, I think that's what makes progress. Because I think everything is better today. The music is better today. The acting is better today. The kids are smarter. And by the same token, the next generation will take the experience of the preceding generation and build on that. I think there always has been a gap. But I think the one, uh, one keynote to all of it is that the young people of today have brought to our minds that enough of this hypocrisy, let's try and deal with the truth from here on in. Are the two age groups really being totally honest with each other I, I can't see I, I can't buy all of that I can, uh, maybe I do travel in different circles uh, uh, but the point is I don't travel in circles uh, I, I don't have a particular circle I don't think the honesty is what the newspapers and magazines make it out to be what the articles make it out to be uh, uh, I think that we have committed a grave sin by forcing the younger generation to have to suppress themselves with us and as a result um, we have split up into so many organizations for instance it's a proven fact now that violence does achieve the goal if it weren't but for it's wrong I know it's wrong I am opposed it's to so violence wrong. but it's a proven fact that when there is violence uh, the blacks all of a sudden because of violence have subtly uh, are getting some of the, uh, their rights uh, in this nation. The Vietnam War, it wasn't the older people. It, by no way was it the older people who brought it out into the open. It was the younger people who had to go and demonstrate and have their heads kicked in. And now all of a sudden Life magazine will show <coughs> pictures of, of the Vietnamese atrocities. But it's the younger people that are doing it and we're forcing them into doing it in ways that, that uh, uh, have violent connotations, the demonstrations and all of that. They're the ones that are doing it. We're not out there demonstrating. Well, getting so our you heads know, when you, when you say atrocities, you know that there are atrocities 
uh, being perpetrated upon our servicemen too. You know about that, don't you? In any, of course, you know we that, should You not know that either. small children throw grenades into groups of our so soldiers. Exactly, but war breeds war. Hate breeds hate. And what they've been trying to say is that it's not a matter of who is getting killed or who's killing who. The fact is we are killing each other. What difference does it make? Mm -hmm. Probably, you know, Mike, uh, the one thing I've, I've meant to tell, I've, I've often wondered, uh, as long as we're on that subject, I've often wondered, we are sitting down talking in Paris, or have been for the last year, whatever it is, to the Viet Cong. Now, the way the war can end is if Russia stops furnishing supplies to North Vietnamese, the war will stop within three months. I wonder why, since we have a quid pro quo that we could relate uh, to Russia with, why aren't we talking to Russia? Because uh, if that were stopped, I don't know why we're talking to the Viet Cong. We're never going to get anywhere there. But if we talk to Russia and Russia stops supplying the Viet Cong, the war has to die of its own, uh, of its own weight. It has to fall apart. I, 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 you've talked to a lot of people on your show, but yes. has anybody ever espoused such a thought? Mm -mm. Not that I can recall. We're coming right back. <laughs>